Hello, Jerry. How are you doing? All right, Ross. What about yourself? I'm all right. Uh, can you speak up a bit, pal? No, is this the mic here? Can you hear me tapping there? Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm all right, mate. What about you? I'm all right. Nice Easter. Yeah, I had a good Easter. Yeah, yeah, I had a good Easter. Uh, what, what are you uh, up to? Oh, mate. Every time um, I come on your channel, I've always had the worst day at work. So <laughs> I'm just trying to chill out a wee bit from uh, another hectic day at work. Uh, what about yourself? I have a shite day at work today. I nearly rag pork is in. Jesus. You serious? What? What's up? Yeah, no, I'm all right. I'm not going to talk about it on here. Too many fucking nosy cunts, but sometimes <laughs> Sorry, man, you just get them days, don't you, where you think, what am I doing here? I'm going around these circles here with this boxing. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, 100%. 100%. Now, did you watch the show at the weekend, Jerry? I missed, um, was it, I missed Freddy's fights with, um, uh, to zoo. Um, but I watched the uh, the Sky show on Sunday. Did you watch um, it freeze against White Collar Wardley? I sure did. I sure did. Do I didn't think? catch the whole card. Um, what did I think of that fight? Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good fight. Um, it was give or take either way. I think both guys actually, um, as brave as they were and how, you know, got to see a performance they both put up I think it actually showed you know there's plenty of guys who probably would cream them at the minute um, in the in the, the heavyweight division I don't think they, those guys are going to be um, plowing through the uh, top 10 at the minute Wardley's but, open to uppercuts all night long and he get tore apart at European level won't he at um, world level yeah I mean he had no answer for um, the uppercut or Clark's jab. And Clark and were like basically... stuck in quicksand and his punches were like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah. You know, slow when it was like, ugh. Slow as out, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, Wardley's answer to that was basically to, you know, eat punches and just leap, leap with those hooks. And I know he, you know, he obviously connected quite a few times, like, but, you know, they do look like, um, you know, I think they, they actually showed themselves in that fight for what they were. And I was very impressed, Wardley, in his Adelaide fight. And now I'm sort of like, oh, oh okay. If that's what you've, you've got, you know, you've, you're lacking quite a bit of skills, you know, defensively. Wasn't moving his head a lot. Um, and like you were saying about Clark, you know, they were both exhausted at the end of the fight. Um, no doubt about it. But uh, Fraser Clark collapsed. I mean, um, somebody said it looked like um, maybe Fraser Clark was hiding how exhausted he was a little bit better than than Wardley, and I think that's true. Um, and I did think he had sort of stamina issues in his last fight as well. So, you know, plenty of flaws between those two guys, I think. Yeah. But it was enjoyable. It was a good fight. It was a good, good, good scrap. Yeah, uh, what do you see next for uh, Wardley and It's Big Freeze? Uh, well, I'm not long after reading um, Fraser Clark's calling for the rematch, you know, ASAP. So I think that's brave, and I think that's the right. I think that's the right decision. Um, I don't. I, I would like to think that they would make that again sooner rather than later rather than string it out um a bit longer and you know milk it maybe you know maybe wait another year or something like that i would i would want to see that sooner rather than later yeah. so hopefully those two guys fed each other again have you ever thought though uh jerry that what they might try and do sky they might because they're going to want a rematch because it was a fantastic fight it's a fight at year easy easy winner in it already Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It'll win blood and guts. a landslide, right? Or a blood and guts fight, brilliant. But it weren't pay-per-view, so the two fighters are going to look at each other. They're both undefeated, but they've got a draw on each other's record. They should rematch. But why would a promoter want to put them in again? 
because they're not going to get pay-per-view because they're not big enough. So if they go around the outside, if you, if I put my matchmakers hat on, right, if they go around yeah. the outside, Jerry, right, and what they do, they fight uh, anybody to just get a few more wins and get maybe a decent win each at British level, and then they go again once it's been built up on social media and in newspapers and you know, and on platforms, you know how it works, don't you? And they might yeah, possibly yeah. get a pay-per-view if they put a stack card because they're not big enough stars yet. Are they really to say we're pay-per-view, even though it were a great fight, wasn't it? But, you know, how many fights have you seen that, um, or, you know, haven't been pay-per-view um, through the years? But there have been great been fights. Now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Carl Froch Taylor, Carl Froch Pascal, Carl Froch uh, Boutte. Carl Frost's boot weren't pay per view uh, 12 years ago. Do you know what I mean? That weren't pay per view. Those were different times, though, because now they try and milk. No, anything's pay per view now, isn't it? If you've got a bit yeah. of a social media following. And that's the argument at the moment in boxing, uh, Jerry. It shouldn't be It shouldn't be that way, though. Um, you know, that's just a, an awful sign of the, uh, the current climate because they, 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 they sell the public. It's still a public uh, a dead dog, like you know, just to make a bit of money out of it. Like, um, but either way, I can see the logic, the way you're thinking. Would Shalom do that? You know, would Ben Shalom, you know, be clever enough to market it that way, and you know, maybe um, get get those guys to kind of steer away from one another, take on maybe another one, two opponents, get some fake intense beef on the go. And then have them fight again, but this time make it as a pay per view. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, everything I'm reading, more so from Wardley, seems to be he wants to get that on, um, sooner rather than later. So, what you're saying makes sense. Um, and it would obviously increase both guys' profile substantially, and obviously be a big payday for both of them too. But I don't know. Yeah, sometimes I think there's too much kind of um need to get to the next level you know and there's a guy starting in front of you you know just take the fight and go on but what you're saying does make sense I, I see the logic yeah yeah and it's a shame really isn't it that uh, we haven't got a winner no um, I think you said big freeze round 8 I said Wardley round 7 knockout yeah. and we were both wrong Um. I thought the refereeing was. Uh, I actually thought Hard Foster in the um, the Congo um, Marku fight was a bit odd as well. Uh, I felt like he was he stopped Marku once he was going, and no doubt about the level and skill between those two guys was um, like quite substantial. But I thought. Um, Steve Gray also disrupted Wardley on a few attacks that I didn't think need to be uh, needed. Those interventions weren't needed. And um, uh, did you see Steve Gray giving any warnings to Fraser um, Clark for low blows? I just saw he just turned around and went, you know, one point off. Yeah. So Steve Gray is uh, Eddie Eddie Hills man though, isn't he? He always has been, and he's Steve Gray. Yeah. Um unfortunately though, that sort of thing really pisses me off with refereeing. Just just what about our this time? Did Say that it again, again, Russ? Score? Oh, his scorecard was crazy. Uh I, I don't I've know. defended Howard because he's a neighbour, but let's have it right. Right, okay. Howard, spec savers have not got a sail on, but I know somewhere that has. Mercatroids at Cunningsborough. Get your up there, Howard. All right. And get them eyeballs <laughs> tested and get them bins on. Don't be vain like me. What do you what do you think of that? That was it was too big a margin. Um his scorecard or sorry, his scorecard, Listen, sorry. No matter what were happening. Everything's worked out brilliant for everybody because they ain't got a loss. We ain't got any bitching. Board are not under any pressure, and it's a perfect result. But are we going to see more draws this year? Because I think we might do. 
because they're saying, well, nobody's happy with whoever wins, how they judge it, so let's hand draws out. So I, I'm saying to everybody, all these big fights, get a bullseye on them for a draw because it's always mega, mega odds. Well, Fury also I mean, I'm not... on draw, isn't it? Really, because they've already got rematch in place. Jesus, I hope not. I hope not, but yeah, I mean, I can see that happening also. You won't put it past that or... giving us a draw, would you? We'll wait. No, no, no. 25 years in it, exactly. <laughs> Lennox Lewis Holyfield in 1999, right? <laughs> so we've been screaming <laughs> all this time. And we're now at a situation where on May the 18th, we've got the greatest fight since 1999, haven't we? Basically, on paper. Unless there's, um, you know, a knockout or a very lopsided uh, fight. Yeah, I could. Well, I can it. Fury I could nail it. other guy because he's like a wasp, and Fury he gets up when he gets knocked down, doesn't he? So it's on, it's all it's yeah. on cards. It's going to points, and it's just a case of who's got the most sway in it now. That's what it's going to all be be about now. This they're not going to knock each other out. Them two, it's going to go all the way. Usyk's been in with every style, hasn't he? He's seen everything. A Fury knows yeah. this is his hardest fight out of the lot. This is his hardest one, you know, and he knows that. This of course, is why he's yeah. to take it serious. This is why he's messed him about. He's tried everything to unsettle Usyk, and I mean just about everything in the book that's legal, right? and none of it's worked. The guy's a machine, isn't he? He doesn't give a damn. He's just a million percent focused. Uh, you know, it will, he, he though, laughs. Though. Say that again, Russ. I think he's the greatest fighter in world boxing at the moment. He's that good. You know, who's gonna be? Who's gonna be? I would... Who's gonna be Tim Osek? He's not been beat since he was a kid, as an amateur, a kid. He's not been yeah, beat. And he's a Vans most of. Not been beat since he was, since he was young, has he? Yeah, and he's a Vans most of his defeats. He's done eleven of them out of fifteen, hasn't he? Well, we've got 350 amateur fights and beat them all, except four. Lomachenko's beat them all at 397 at set one, and he rematched him, didn't he? Crazy um, stats on those guys, both of them. I mean, I would I would agree with you, I tend to agree with you, but, you know... Hang on a second, Jerry. Yeah? Drip it, dripping, I'm just live now. Do you want to say, oh, I've got Jerry on? Going, Jerry. It's Dripping Tap, the legendary Dripping. How's it going, Dripping Tap? You want Drip? I didn't know you were filming, pal, but uh, I'll catch you with you tomorrow. I'll hear you tomorrow, mate. All right, then, Drip. See you, pal. I got that off your dad anyway. Take care, mate. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Dripping Tap, the one and only legendary Dripping, who... Uh, Three year ago, said Conor Ben's back. He's on juice him. As soon as he got stuck into everybody, he says, you don't gear him. I said, hey, Drip, you can't say that on here. You'll get me shot to shit. I said, that's your opinion, <laughs> Drip. I had to cover my sound quick. Anyway, not long after, it come out, didn't it? That he was, yep, that's yeah, true. And dripping were only one. Who, who, Sean, who, who mentioned it, wasn't he, basically? Because I would have been on a bit. I thought it wouldn't be that, Conor Ben wouldn't be that stupid. Wouldn't he? You know, he's having it off. Why would you want to mess up a million pound a year deal? Whatever deal he's got. Why would you want to mess that bad up for a few steroids? Bad advice. Maybe um, that doctor guy who I can't remember. Um, maybe he told him he had a foolproof plan. You don't know. You know. Yeah. That doctor's gone missing, hasn't he? Is what? You know that doctor. Um, who was linked to Connor Ben? You know the the really shitty doctor guy. He's gone missing, hasn't he? Well, they all do, don't they? <laughs> when it comes on top, everybody goes missing, don't they? Where's P Diddy? He's gone missing, hasn't he? Oh, right enough, yeah. Yeah, I've got pals around here who are on the toes in Spain. Do you know what I mean? When it's on top, yeah, you've got burnt rubber, aren't you, mate? Mate, <laughs> you got to get gone. <laughs> get, get out of dodge, yeah. You've got to get out of dodge, so, pal. That's what you've got to do. You've got to be off and take your chances, aren't you, in the real world? Yeah. You know what I mean? If you get 100%. Well, at least you've had a few years on the lamb, aren't you? 
That's how I look at it. <laughs> well, that's how I look at it. And I've been on run, Jerry. I know what it's all about, mate. And it's horrible. It's horrible. I'm not surprised. Anybody, because nowadays, if it's for anything, there's things in paper, isn't there? and people are getting on phone and they're getting them rewards, aren't they? 150 quid and 500 quid and that. So yep. it's a nightmare. And I've I've had, I've got pals who've been on run. One of my pals were on run 15 months living up north in a caravan. And he were, he were on run for something really heavy and he got lifed off. Yeah. He's out now, but he got he didn't kill anyone, but he got a life sentence. You know, on that uh two strike thing. So yep, and, yep. and it were always said to me, God, I just hated it. He hated it every minute of it. Every single minute of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's Obviously, don't have any experience though. You can't function yourself. But uh, it's one of the things. That... What do you think about the show on, on as a whole? What do you think to that Ben Whitaker? What do you think to him? I don't like him. I think he's a dick, and I hope he gets iced. He can't punch for himself, <laughs> and he's carrying off like he's Aaron Pryor. Uh, um, I, I, I've said this to you before. I don't like anyone who acts like a complete and utter asshole, so I don't like him either. Um, I was watching the fight thinking, um, I wonder does Russ really dislike him now after that? But it was very, very noticeable in that fight that um, that fella, um, Willings, Le- Leon Willings, um, he did the right thing, and I think he's shown the blueprint now of how to beat Whitaker. Um, all it needs is a guy who punches harder, and with more skills, he'd take care of Whitaker easy. But basically, Willings put on um, uh, Whitaker and decided if I just keep punching every time he, like, you know, faints or whatever, I'm going to catch him because every so often he tries to do something stupid or turn away or do something silly. And he was getting caught. He was getting caught. And every time Willings punched him in the face, I, I applauded. So um, I was very happy with that. Um, I think that that he, what's Willings an area level fighter, so he's exposed Whitaker to some degree there, um, and I'm just glad it's happened. Um, I felt like Dan Aziz on the commentary was being very complimentary about Whitaker, um, which I was surprised at. So um, I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of unusual. Um, because I don't know how anyone can enjoy. I know some people do enjoy the showboating, but I personally think it's disrespectful. Um, you know, it's this is boxing. Be entertaining in how you execute your craft. Don't don't act like it's a fucking pantomime. Do you know what I mean? It pisses me off. So um, yeah, I, I was pleased every time Ben Whitaker got punched in the face. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, he couldn't get him out there, that guy, could he? No, no. For a play, for a play to his opponent. Saying, that's why I'm thinking to myself, Ben Whitaker's saying he'll deal with people like Dan Aziz and people like that and Yard, right? Yard would light him up and Dan Aziz, I reckon, beats him. Now... I agree. I agree. It's a lot of right. I think that... Being controversial with all these fancy moves and how he's disrespecting fighters. But when all said and done, the guy's not getting guys out there. You only behave like that when you're like Nazim Ahmed. Right? He's the only one that could pull it off because he knocked everybody out, didn't he? He fought except one guy. Yeah. Um that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. I think uh the mystique and the kind of you know the uh the image Ben Whitaker's kind of built up. For himself with all that showboating and, and acting on like that in the fight, I think um that has come undone and very quickly into his career as well. I think uh people aren't gonna be phased by that at all. They, they know they know now just to punch through it. And anybody with like I said, anybody with um more skills, you know, higher level opponent or a higher class of opponent and more punching power is gonna gonna knock him out. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. But uh, what do you see happening with this Callum Smith comeback and all this? It's all a bit stop start, isn't it? And you think he's done now? Um, I mean, t- comebacks, I'm 50 50 on, um, on comebacks. Uh, they're, you know, 
they don't always have the best um they don't always have the best outcome you know sometimes it's maybe better to you know quit while you're ahead so i don't know i've never been a big fan really so you know if he comes back and he has a bit of success success fair play but you know sometimes it's better to know when you're done and you've made your money and call it a day what about you yeah, I I agree with you, mate. But this is how I look at it, right? You've got to have an a, an end game if you're in boxing. Right? You've got to have an yeah, end yeah. game. You can't just be one of them coming back for a payday when you're on a skid row because you've got no out of job, haven't you? You've got to get yeah. some out of job. And there's too many fighters nowadays that are hanging around because they've not got what they should have gone out of job, haven't they, really? Yeah. Uh okay. Uh, speaking of people uh who are hanging around the sport and really they should be either putting mega effort in or not. Big White Rhino's got his centre files. Oh, who's he signed up? Uh, Big to White fight? Rhino is fighting uh Jake Darnell, a two and twenty five guy, and he's getting a lot of stick tonight from what I'm seeing on social media. People sending me. The white rhino, somebody said to him, the bloke you're fighting has had 27 fights and he's lost 25, Dave. You're almost 30 fights into your career and still fighting journeymen. Got so much respect for you, Dave, but I don't respect this decision, bro. You're just boxing to make a living to feed your family. I kind of get it, but there's a lot safer ways to make a living rather than stopping and starting boxing every so many months. You're a massive character. Get on the punchy side of things. You'd be amazing at it. I probably agree with that. I think his talent is probably maybe training and being a pundit because I don't think he is ever going to be as fit as what he used to be, which were never really fit, were it? We saw it having ability and being tough, but you've got to put the yards in, haven't you? You think, Jerry? Um, I agree. I, I think whoever... Um whoever said that comment was actually, you know, quite considerate and weren't, they weren't being an asshole about it. Um, I think they were being very fair. Uh, I think when Dave originally called it a day, um, you, you kind of sign out. If you make that decision in your head, you kind of sign out. And then whenever you sort of try to come back for whatever reason, you, you're never fully back. I don't think. And, um, like you just mentioned, Dave's he wasn't obviously the fittest guy, but when he was at his fittest, you know, it's probably too much effort for him to get to that level of fitness now to either be better or to be on the same level that he was. Um, I, I, I kind of worried it like for the guy because you know, he's he obviously um hasn't been the same since uh Lewis Ortiz, um, you know. And uh, I just kind of doesn't need to be taking any more punishment, even if it is like knockover guys like this fella who he's signed up for um, the fight now. Um, um, maybe he should look at um, a different horizon and, you know, put his eggs into that basket as opposed to this basket. And, um, you know, if he can make um, use of himself as a trainer, pass on his knowledge and nurture some talent, um, that's that's a much more pro, much more productive um uh career path I think rather than <clears throat> well right I was fired back it. here he said if you want me to pay fifteen grand for me to fight a six rounder against somebody you still wouldn't be happy with me fighting I will send you my bank details this evening everyone is entitled <laughs> to their say but boxing. It's a very mad, weird business. You would only understand if you're in it. You're only as good as your last fight. I've realised, so bear with me. You'll Lord, love me again one day. All day, they're trying to be funny. I see where he's coming from. Uh, I mean, he said here, I literally, the only opponent I could afford is this guy here, 2 and 25. I could afford with my ticket sales. I'm not paying to box. Uh, I have kids. I need a fight. I need some rounds. He's a tough fella. Hopefully I get the win, get some rounds and move on to the next and sell more tickets next time I get a step up in opposition. 
I were led to believe, well, we were all led to believe that Dave Allen were this big, massive ticket seller, weren't we, from Eddie Hills? Well, where are the ticket sales? Yeah, that was that was when Eddie was um, making him out to be, you know, like a pantomime character, you know, lovable fan favourite well, Eddie's dumped so. him. He's just Joe Average now, isn't he, basically? It's awful what's happened to him. It's like he's been used as like a project, isn't it? You think? You know, for for yeah. Eddie's little kicks, and his dad were doing the same sort of thing with Sam Eggington, who's a bit more of a serious fighter, isn't it? But the point I want to make is, uh, I think Dave Allen's been tre- disgustingly by a match room myself. I have to spew in his guts for them, do you think? Yeah, um, it's it is very sad to see that, um, and you know. I wonder, is he fully aware of that, you know, himself? And, you know, does he feel feel bad that he's, you know, made those choices and went along with things that, you know, he maybe thought were a good idea at the time? You don't know. Um, but then again, he's in this position now where he's looking to get some fights. So, you know, I'm sure if Matt Shroom actually approached them again and offered him a, some kind of deal, he'd probably take it. If he's all about yeah. money. He probably would. He'll take out. Hey, listen, if you've been on a big Ron show, you're turning up, pulling mothballs out of your pocket and you're leaving with no pockets. Yep. yep. You know what I mean? So that's the sad thing about it. You know, he, he'd probably he'd probably jump at them the chance to be on a with a bigger, you know, bigger promoter. Yeah, I think he would. But it's it's his own doing, really, Dave's, isn't it? Because he's not being active. And if you're not active, your tools are not sharp, are they? No. You know, that's how I look at it. But uh, hey-ho. Joe G, he's just flown out to uh, Saudi tonight. Uh, So he's over there till Sunday. That's good news, isn't it? He's doing well out there. Joe G, isn't he? He's up and down there. Yep. And uh, he deserves it. So let's hope he can make a make a go of things out there. Yeah. With his gym. Yeah. He uh, he kept that quiet a year, you know, Joe G. You know, the offer and all that while they were all going to get put together. Could you imagine if he'd have said to him that they'd have tried to cut his legs off, wouldn't they? That's the best way to have done it, Ross. That's the best way to have done it. He really had something bubbling. Listen, mate. He's got some pull over there now. Trust me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He's got some pull over there, mate, over there now. What's going on? I'm not going to go into detail. He's got some pull over there, Joe G. So good luck to him. That's what I say. Do you know what I mean? Can I read right? Is he training Lawrence O'Coley now? Training Lawrence O'Coley. He's got... uh, Turkey Al Sheik, the main man out there, he's yeah. got Joe Gallagher in office and he's in charge of the whole operation over there for boxing. That's really good. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a big office in there. He's, he's done really, really well. And uh, and obviously, he's a decorated trainer, isn't he? So you've got to tip your hat to him. He's a load to stick, hasn't he? But yeah. Look at that. So, and his CV speaks volumes for himself, doesn't it, really? Sure does. How many words has he got? You know, got a lot of champions. Yeah. Any Quigs out there training some prince's son? Quiggy, oh, really? Yeah, Quiggy. Uh, he'll be holding for for Joe over here, like won't it? Um, but he's been yeah. uh, few months training uh, some some young lad out there. The, the, listen, it's it's where it's happening, isn't it? Now, yeah, I'm just worried that British fans are not all going to be able to afford to keep going out there for big fights, Jerry. What do you think? They won't. How could you? You know, that'll make um, rather than a sport, you know, that that every man can attend. That'll make things slightly more of a an upmarket sport that you know only people that have got high level incomes can afford to go to. So that's obviously not good. Um, although I do think um, aren't they talking about putting on a show in Wembley? The uh, the thirties. Well, uh, um, 
Yeah, I think I've I've caught wind of something like that in the last couple of weeks. Um, no, I can't remember the exact details, but I think um, that's a nice kind of way to keep things still obviously ticking over in the UK. But the draw of bringing um, you know massive fights exclusively on Saudi soil is definitely going to have an impact on fans getting out to to go and see these big fights. It definitely will. So you that's reckon? not so good. Yeah, that's not so good, unfortunately. <coughs> I won't I would I wouldn't be able to go out, put it that way. Would you go out there, Jerry? Um don't care what anyone says about this next comment, but um it's not a country I'd want to visit, but uh no, I don't think I would uh, be able to afford to to go out and do that um just for um to see a big fight. Probably uh, sooner travel to the UK than uh, I would to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. What about you? Uh, you what, mate? Would I go out there? I won't go out there, mate. Me. No, I can't see. Me. <laughs> Unless Turkey Al Sheep flew me out there. <laughs> no, I come, with, I come back with an arm missing, wouldn't I? Me, or an, an ear or something, or a leg or something, wouldn't I? You know, I've got long hair. They'd probably uh they'd probably cut my hair off. Probably what, Jerry? They'd probably cut my hair off, mate. <laughs> Jerry, I'm not being funny, but that needs cussing, doesn't it? That are yours, doesn't it? Let's have it right. Jerry. No way, mate. <laughs> Is it like uh, no. uh do you use shampoo and that on it a lot, Jerry? Um just whenever I have a shower, yeah. You know, you're muzzy though, Jerry. If you got rid of that, it won't be, it'd be, you'd look a lot better, wouldn't you? I'd, I'd look young. I wouldn't get served in the off license. I'd have to I'd have to keep a moustache on just to get served. <laughs> oh, Jerry, bless him. They'd, they'd be asking me for ID, Ross. They'd be asking <laughs> you for what? They'd be asking me for ID every time I go to the off license. Well, so if you don't mind me asking, Jerry. What are you, Jammer? How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 41, mate. 41. 41. And you're getting married, aren't you? Yeah, in a year and a eight months. Don't do it, Jerry. They take off. Uh, prenup. Prenup. <laughs> they don't do them in the UK, you know. Do they not? Oh, there you go. Shows you how much I know. No, that's why people get married abroad, isn't it? <laughs> I've already, uh, I've been with her for over 10 years now, so, you know. Yeah, but Jerry, as soon as you get married, they turn into little monsters, don't you know? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, they but turn thanks into... for the advice. What they do, you see, I've got pals, I'm not going to say who, but when they got married, within a week, everything would all change. The lives were upside down. Yeah. You know, it, it just changes them, mate, women. You've got to be very, very careful, Jerry, When if you're getting married. Be very careful. Be weary, Jerry, and always sleep. I have. Always sleep with a weapon under the bed, Jerry. <laughs> I have had friends who have had that sim similar sort of thing happen. But um, I don't know. You know, don't be a doormat. That's that's the way I look at it. Like, don't get that's married. Not, that's not... Don't get married because... Honestly... When you come it's in, not from, my... when you're married, Jerry, and you're coming from pub normally, you come in at 11 o'clock, don't you? 11 30. You might have a piss outside, you know what I mean? Burping and farting after you <laughs> come peas. All right. When you get in the house, they stand there, don't they, with arms folded, Jerry? Or if, like me, what used to happen to me in olden days, I'd just get to the top at driver and I'd see two big bin liners, even though I've got f some, some snide cases in house. I'd see two big bin liners with all my clobber in them. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what I'd get. And key in door so you can't get in. You know, just because you've been with your pals, or, you know, Friday to Monday or something. You know, mail well, London and things like that, Jerry. That's what I had to go home to, mate. That's why I'm like I am now. <laughs> that's he that's, that's right, hectic, that's mate. Um, uh, my my missus doesn't, doesn't give me any shit like that, but then I don't when I have a drink, I might drink often, but I'm never like totally smashed. But um, who you can afford to go to the pub these days? Some women don't put up with it though, do they? Oh, I mean, my my missus doesn't even drink, but um, you know, I doesn't mind me having a drink in the house. You know, a bit like Andy. I'm a bit like Andy. You know, have a nice 
uh, vodka and tonic, you know, sit and watch the fight. Actually, um, I'm quite quite lucky actually in that respect because I get away with watching all the boxing, so you know, don't have to um watch uh something different. I can watch the sport. Yeah, you sure can, Jerry. Uh, do you want to go on to uh, part two, pal? Yeah, no worries, mate. I'll see you in a few minutes. Please join us on part two, where we will be joined by Jerry. Women love him, men want to be him.